practical, not as much practical use. So choroidal neovascularization, not due to AMD. So here's what the book says are your causes of CNV. I wish I could call them people who run out of time. So degenerative, degenerative, we've already talked about one of those, AMD. Heterodegenerative, which is kind of like the same category, but I guess whatever. Uh, inflammatory, there's a bazillion. Tumor, look, we got more. Traumatic is there, and we got, of course, idiopathic. All right, so 31-year-old Caucasian female, myopic, not a lot, like minus three-ish, minus four, uh, vision of 2,400 in the right eye, no cell. If you had to pick a white dot syndrome that this is, what would you pick? If you had to pick a second white dot syndrome, which one would you pick? Because we don't see like... Uh, Outside of the fovea, things are pretty normal, right? And I said there's no cell. So that's one clue. I know that I gave you that young white female, but that's like all of them, myopic or whatever. So um, she's got some photopsia or photopsias, if you're okay putting an S on a plural, pre-pluralized pre word. Okay, I'll give you a choice. MCP or PIC? All right, pick. Sorry, guys. <laughs> we need to do the white dot syndrome lecture, right, next month. Okay, she has pick. She's got a CNV. And then her FA, eh, a little bit of some leakage maybe. or stay, uh, Yeah, maybe some leakage. That's a little bit later. Okay, good. And, oh, yeah, definitely leakage. All right, good. <clears throat> OCT's terrible quality. One of my co-fellows uh, scanned this in. Okay, and this is later on. It dried up after Avastin. So, CNV due to pick. Pick gets, has a high rate of CMV, right? So this is that patient whose color fundus photo was like totally blocking everything before. When I first started treating him, everybody's heard this story now, thought he had just regular old uh, run-of-the-mill uh, wet AMD, but he actually had android streaks. So they're baby android streaks. But we he's a nice guy. He said he'd go to for genetic testing, so he went ahead and got genetic testing done. ABCC6 positive, which gives you a higher risk of cardiovascular disease earlier in life, peripheral arterial disease specifically. He actually did have a FEMPOP bypass, but he had that right around the time where I first started seeing him. So I don't feel bad that maybe I missed something or I didn't know enough to help him. But if you see somebody with angioid streaks, get them tested, get uh, get their, you know, send them to a peripheral vascular clinic. Angioid streaks, I don't have enough mnemonics these days, but Pepsi, this is an important one. You'll get tested on this. Paget, ehlers Danlos, Pseudoxanthoma, Elasticum, Sickle Cell, Idiopathic. So this is a patient with angioid streaks, right? We're still talking about it. And if you look at here, you see that kind of uh, stippled appearance, kind of orangey. So we call that potange, the skin of an orange. And not everybody with angioid streaks has this. This is more specific to Pseudoxanthoma, Elasticum, to the best of my knowledge. This is a patient without that pot orange, but they've got nice, big, highway-like android streaks. Not nice if you, they're, it's your eye. Say, other eye. What else do you want to tell these people besides get your genetics done? Eye protection, because then this could happen if you don't, right? So this person got hit in the face, probably a pretty minor injury, but is bleeding everywhere. Probably not CNV, probably just rupture of Brooks. Still should have got an FA. I didn't see it. Okay. This is a patient with what? What do we see here? Anybody? Just one word. There's like a few words you could say, but blood. Mm. So, right, there's some blood. We like to say heme. Uh, some retinal fluid. I think I have an OCT coming up. This is like a, a doc that PCS shortly after I saw him. But he had histoplasmosis and a couple little white dots. Yeah, punched. They're kind of like early punched out because I did an OCT theorem and they're really not punched out yet. They're almost like little drews in without the. And, and, RPE atrophy, but yeah, they will become punched out lesions probably. That's the here's the tetrad, right? Punched out chorio retinal lesions, peripapillary atrophy, C and V, absence of atritis. If they have atritis, what do we say it is, or what do we think about? Anybody? Cricket or something else? <laughs> what? No. MCP. All right, oh. you guys stick around next month. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I've actually already got it on the web if you want to watch it. It's one of the better lectures I've ever made. So 90% uh, of OHS individuals have positive skin reactions to histoplasmin, and 60% have bilateral disease. You also think about there are other things that can look like this, but we'll move along. We saw somebody last week who had uh, this disease or this trauma. What do we see on the OCT? We don't normally think of it when we see it, see it on OCT first. But there's this big whitish thing right there on the right side, right? 
you see hyperreflectivity through the choroid, to, to the sclera even, you go, wow, something's wrong with the RPE. You look at the color, find this photo, and that's what? Choroidal, Choroidal rupture. And this was a nice little 11 year old girl who actually had great vision, 2025. But then she came back two months later, and what did she have? She got CMV. So uh, she's like 11 or 12 years old. Subretinal fluid on the OCT, and what did we do? Right, injection. I know, and she handled it well. I didn't do it when my co fellows did it. And uh, oh, here's her FA before we did the injection after the FA. And you can see classic looking lesion there. Okay. And she got back to 2025. So doing well. And that little PED that you see on the bottom right, where it's kind of irregular, kind of like almost pyramid shaped, that's a very typical appearance of my limited experience of. Uh, of a C of a, like if somebody who has an idiopathic CMV or a CMV that's not related to AMD, it just little tightens up like that. I don't know why. Okay, pathologic myopia. This one's a little bit different than the rest of the other causes of CMV because you get this widespread degeneration of the retina and RPE and Brooks. It's just getting stretched out, right? And so they are at a higher risk for developing recurrent CMV than the other folks are. Myopia is the most common ocular abnormality. A quarter of, of the U.S. I'm one of them, or I was, I guess. Pathologic myopia has various definitions, minus 8 or greater than 32.5 millimeters axial length. I'll read these off. These are actually important to think about. Tilted optic disc, peripapillary atrophy, lacquer cracks. I've seen the isolated subretinal hemorrhages. You get the FA and there's no leakage there. Uh, they get these little cracks in um, Brooks membrane. Forster Fuchs spots, posterior staphyloma, elongation, atrophy of the CB. Haven't seen that. G uh, gyrate atrophy. Um, I should have shown, th I should have thrown in some pictures here. Um, paving stone degeneration, lattice degeneration, C and V is what this topic's about. I don't know if you guys are going to talk about retinal manifestations of myopia in another lecture, so I want to throw it in. And I really should have shown them because I'm I'm already at the end of my lecture. That that was really quick, but so I'll I'll say for a couple seconds. Um, when you're treating somebody with non AMD related C and V. I typically do not tell them they're going to have injections for the rest of their life, whether it's histo or myopia or whatever. I will. I do an as-needed from the get-go, and I don't even do a series of three anymore. I just treat them. If the fluid's gone the next visit, I don't treat them. But I see them quickly. I see them at four weeks. So it's almost like an observe and extend. I'll keep on seeing them for four weeks, then I'll go to five or six weeks, then I'll go to eight weeks. If they're doing fine and I trust them with an AMSA grid, then I'll, I'll turn them loose for a few months. I do not commit them to treatment forever. Now, with that said, some people might have some frequency of recurrence that's predictable. I haven't had that patient yet, but if I knew they're going to recur it every three months, actually I have a pattern. No, no, I'm thinking of BRVO, CRVO. BRVO, CRVO, sometimes those guys will go three months without needing an injection, but that's a different subject altogether. So, um, but the idiopathic folks, I treat them. As soon as I see fluid, I do not observe it. I do not wait on it. And then I slowly turn them loose. Um, any questions in the last next few seconds, minutes? Anybody have patients with histo-related CNV or toxo-related CNV that they're treating on their own right now? No. Okay. All right. They typically do really well, especially if, if they're young. It depends on where the lesion is too, but uh, visual acuity, they've got a, usually a bright future. All right. That's it. Thanks, guys. Thanks.